And we are live. Hey, what's up, team? Eddie Gray here. So happy to be here. Listen, we at HF Music Academy have a 45-day challenge. And so what we're doing is we're encouraging creatives from all over the world to do what they love. I mean, this is what you guys want to do anyway. So why not put together a challenge to put yourself in a position where you can feel a little bit of pressure, right? Take yourself to the next level and, and feel what it's really going to be like when you're in the game, when you have all this stuff going on, you got to close this deal. You got to go over here and take care of this. And so we just figured why not put an opportunity in front of people where they can try and get the most out of themselves from writing. And so what does it look like? All right. Well, I figured, you know what, rather than just being in theory, rather than just talking about it, rather than just making plans, I figured, why don't we just get on it and write music for music licensing? This is what I do on the daily. This is what I've been doing for almost seven years now. My anniversary is November 21st. Prior to that, I was a personal trainer, and now I'm doing this full time. Welcome to my studio. Here it is, Chameleon 8 Studios in LA. And look, we're stoked. So if you want to check out what we're up to, if you want to take on the 45-day challenge, check out hfmusicacademy.com. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take you guys in. How do you do it? How do you write music? Well, if you've been following me, you saw... Uh, let me do this here. Yeah, that works. You saw what uh, what we were doing yesterday. I was basically uh, generating ideas from... There we go. I was generating ideas from from various sources. You know, I, I put some stuff in uh, with machine. I, um, I was using Launchpad and I was, you know, transferring over information. And so right now uh, we left off somewhere around here, you know, so I want to show people how they can recreate uh, maybe a loop they find on Splice or what have you. How can I... Uh, make a song continue how can i sustain the inspiration and not be stuck in a four bar loop well let's listen to what i have this far <laughs> All right, so you see I've got a working idea. The most inspiring piece is probably the synthesizer. Take a listen to it. Okay, but I didn't play that in. That was something that, you know, that I found that I thought was interesting that got me inspired. And so now how do I keep this going? How, how do I keep this train going? So the way that I keep this going is that I try and figure out the part. There are instances where potentially you could use Melodyne and you can try and, you know, use this MIDI. Maybe as a test, we can, you know, record the information in, export the MIDI, right? We can try doing that. Um, but also, if you know how to play or you have a pretty decent ear, that's also another option. So... We're going to listen to the chord progression. We're going to do our best to decipher what it is and to see if we can build off of it. So I was playing with it a little bit earlier. Uh, let me take, yeah, let's go into low latency mode so that when I play, I can, you know, play on the spot. So this uh, progression is pretty basic. So let's listen to it here. So people usually ask me, how do you, let me take out this reverb, by the way. People usually ask me, how do you find the chord progression? Like maybe, maybe it's something that you didn't grow up with. Maybe it's something that, you know, you didn't develop. Uh, well, so then the very first thing is I look for the fundamental frequency. I look for the tonic, like what's the very first note. And so if I don't know the key, I'll just start playing. You know, I'll just start playing until I find something. So right away I can hear that that's the fundamental frequency. Let's listen. If I play it an octave up, you'll hear it a little bit better. 
So then from there, I'll just start building the chord progression. So we know it's uh, so. okay. So it's basically like a, a one, a three, and then uh, you know the same one on an oct octave up. So we'll play that first note in. In Logic, it's pretty easy now. I could just hit something, and I can hit. Shift R. Oh wait, it recorded everything prior to that performance. Hopefully it should work now. Let's try it. All right, so there's that chord. I'll move over to the next uh, chord here. And we know it's uh, one whole tone down. So that sounds like it right there. Let's try that. Same thing. I'm just going to hit the chord and then use capture recording, which is available to all of us in Logic. 10.5 uh, has this new feature where you can use capture recording in stop mode. And so it's pretty wonderful. So I'm going to play the chord. I didn't pick it up. Why not? Shift R. Let's try it again. Ah, my bad. All right, there's the flub right there. We don't need it, obviously. And then we'll just nudge this back a little bit. I'll fix the timing. Let's just make sure the progression is where it needs to be. All right, I like it. Quantize that, sounds pretty good. And then from what I remember, it goes back to the key, but, but they add like an extension, so they add another note. I think it's that one right there. Let's check. Yeah, that sounds like it. You go ahead and record that. Uh, let's see. doesn't really look like it. Why is it spread like that? Hmm. There we go. That looked funny. I'm not sure if you caught that. All right, cool. So let's listen to what we got this far. All right, so right there, it's kind of like they stay on the same chord, but then at the same time, you can hear that they, um, they maybe they change the, the bass note. And so, of course, we're just guessing, you know, we're just kind of trying to figure it out. Some people have impeccable, uh, you know, ears. They've got uh, perfect pitch and they can, they can hear it top to bottom. Uh, you know, for the rest of us, we got to work, we got to grind it out and it's all good. So um, this sounds good. This sounds good. We come back to this chord here. Uh, yeah, and so another thing I love about Logic is if you look up here in the LCD screen, so you have to customize and control the uh, customize the control bar and display. If I hit a chord, you figure out what chord that is. So check that out: E flat, three five. I'm not sure what that N O is for, but you have a E flat fifth. So um, let's figure out what this extension is. All right, yeah, so it sounds like it's one semitone down. So originally it was here. And we're going to move that note down one whole step. All right, so let's try that out. Uh, maybe let me reset the buffer. So just press play once and I could record it in, but I'm not a piano player. So this is just a much more effective way for me to do it. 
So it's. All right, and then I'll hit Shift R, and that will will get that to MIDI information that I just played to show up in the tracks area. Um, you know, I encourage you to to do what you got to do uh, to to make sure you get the information you need to get. Uh, does it matter if I use, uh, you know, a certain program? Should I use Captain Chords? Do I use, uh, you know, uh, let's see, there's some great plugins on here. Uh, Mosaic Beats, Auto Theory, uh, which now has converted to Chord Prism. I don't know. Everybody's got a different process. And you just have to kind of spend some time with it, develop a relationship to the DAW, and then get the job done. So let me uh, start to edit this, fine tune it a little bit more. In order to do that, though, I want to move to a separate screen. So I'm going to hit Command 4. You can also look for the Piano Roll Editor inside. Uh, and the reason we want to do this is so that we can really get some proper screen real estate. So now let's do some MIDI editing um, and let's do it in such a way where, you know, we have enough room to look at. I'm not squinting. My head's not like, you know, all the way, you know, all up in the screen. So uh, let's listen to this again. So it sounds like there's something happens there in terms of, like maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, some kind of sustained thing, some kind of sus chord. So I'm going to use the scissor tool and kind of distinguish when that is. It could be there. Uh, I'll play with it. And so then I'll hit option down. Sounds like it's something simple like that. Let's see if that's the case. Yep, that works for me. I want these to line up to this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit shift. And I forget. Wait, that's not going to work. So basically, you want these notes to go all the way over to these MIDI notes here. So I'm going to control click and I'm going to say trim note end to the following. Let's see if this works. May or may not. Let's, uh, let's see, I tried that out last time. Ah, it didn't work. It's got to be a better way of doing that. Let me try this one. Nope. Um, okay, we'll try one more. So then I'm going to select these and these, and let's see if this works. So I'm going to trim the note end to the selected notes that I just selected. Let's see if this works. Maybe, maybe not. Nope, it did not work. All right. So if that's the case, then we just kind of take it back to the basics right there. All right, let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, for now that sits pretty well. There could be maybe a change here. Uh, let's try this out. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, and and again, you know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be the exact chord. I could create different variations on it. But that sounds pretty good to me right now. So I'm kind of I'm I'm pretty happy that I was able to to get it to translate. It's not always the case. Uh, again, you could use Melodyne. In fact, why don't we just try that out for fun? Let's see if uh, if Melodyne kind of lived up and, and could figure out the information that was inside of that synth. So I already recorded that prior to getting on. So I'm just gonna say, can you save the MIDI? And we'll just say try this MIDI. Okay, and so I just added a piano track here. I'm going to grab it. I got a second screen up here. Let's see. What does this sound like? And by the way, it, could, it can be trash. You know, it's like you just never know. So let's see. So you see what's going on, right? It, it's, it's taking all the tremolo from the, from the synthesizer, 
you know, it's it's um, it's trying to interpret every single note rather than just the chord itself. So that's a no go. Um, but cool, we got this here. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna try and create some kind of chord progression now, right? So that we don't just have a loop. We're we're now, uh, if you've been following since yesterday, we're getting outside the scope of just uh, you know an eight bar loop, and, and we're starting to write in effect you know, a song. And so in order to do that, we need what variety dynamics, uh, we need to build over time. So let me go back to this piano. And let's just let's add some reverb. Just to give it some magic. Let's see what this sounds like. So then now we kind of have a basis. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of delay to this just to, to give it something different. Um, I've been following uh, the work of, where's that book? I put it in my backpack, but it's a, a great book called uh, like Secrets of Mixing by a gentleman named Stavro. And uh, you can check it out. It's on my Instagram. Eddie Gray music, but in the book, he's saying that if you want to use delay, use it in such a way where you're, you're playing it, but not like precisely and directly on the rhythm. And that's going to make it more musical. And so we're going to try that theory out. Um, I don't know if we're going to use both the left and the right. Let's start with just the right. So we're, we're using a stereo delay, meaning left and right channel. And then from here, I'm going to filter out the settings. Okay. Um, you never really want to use a delay uh, using the, you know, the exact same replica. So if you're saying the word, hey, the, the echo or the delay should sound different, right? And so here I'm going to utilize the deviation numbers to get away from a perfect eighth note, right? It's going to be a little bit off, but we're going to do it in such a way where it sounds natural. So let's listen to this. Cool. So notice it's not playing long enough, so I'm just going to increase the feedback, okay? Okay, I actually like that a lot. I'm just going to drop the level. So that now we're dealing with the delay on the right speaker, right? And so then from here, I'm going to take the filter and I'm going to try bringing it so I'm listening to just the mids, not necessarily anything below 200 or above uh, 25. Let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, okay. All right, so in order to create a much more natural transition, we're going to have to play in some kicks because it's just, it gets too big, right? I don't want to just put in a riser and then have this, you know, abrupt thing come in. So we're going to, we're going to play this in. Um, I guess I don't remember which kit I was using. I'm pretty sure. So I've got machine set up over here. Uh, let me see if I could find what I was using yesterday. So if you do not know Machine by Native Instruments, let me tell you, they're absolutely incredible. Um, there's sound selection is uh, otherworldly. I mean, it is is so, so, so uh, just beautiful. It's exceptional. So uh, I'm going to play this in. So I've got this connected directly to my interface. I'm going to... Uh, select my inputs here. Oh, hang tight. Um, and then, all right, that looks good. Let's make sure I'm getting some signal. Yep, looks good. 
And so I'm gonna use something that's a little bit more filtered like that. So this is audio going directly into the DAW. Uh, so let's see. So I'm gonna record two ideas, four on the floor, pretty basic, and then just kind of the you know halftime uh, proverbial beat. Let's try that out. Ah, uh, let's get a counting going. Three key commands for the counting. What is it? Shift K. Yep. Boom. Boom. All right. So I'm just going to quantize it just off the top. All right. And then I'm going to use a track alternative to, to nestle or tuck an idea inside of the same track. Why am I doing that? Well, I don't want to take up a bunch of space on the tracks area, right? This isn't, this isn't a place to develop ideas. I could use the new live loops and record this stuff in here. In fact, why don't we just try that? Let's give it a spin. Um, straight quarter notes. Ah. what happened oh i gotta use the tracks button i'll try this and if not let's just move on uh wait this should be facing that way good all right let's see what is going on here um that should work that should work Record into this cell. Two, three, four. Good. All right. So then now the tracks area can become a, a place where you start to contain ideas. It's kind of an interesting concept rather than having it on the tracks area. So now, you know, this becomes a place where you can imagine, uh, experiment. You know, just uh, just try it. Try something else out. You know, it doesn't always have to be the same. So let's listen here. All right, all right, good. So look, we we know that's in in my back pocket in case I ever need it. I'm gonna get away from the live loops grid right now. So option N to go back to the tracks area. Notice everything's dimmed, and that's because the track activator button is facing or directed towards the live loops grid. All right, so um, you guys may not know this, but I'm an Apple certified T3 logic trainer. So when you know, you're know you always getting updates, you gotta stay kind of you know in tune with all the little bit uh, details that, that go on. And so I spent a lot of time studying logic 10.5 and uh, yeah, th there's small little uh, contingencies, you know, that you need to learn. Like if this happens, then that will happen. If I need to do this, then I need to do that. And so I try and keep all, uh, you know, my people kind of in the now of why things occur the way they do. So yeah, just be aware this is the track activation button. So if you ever have a screen that's muted all the way like this, it's probably one of two reasons. The track activation button is facing the live loops grid, okay? And or you could have something uh, in solo mode. So you're probably, you know, doing something like this. Uh, and that could be very confusing as well. Um, and then another thing actually could be that everything is just muted at the same time like that. So that would be control M to remedy that. So anyway, just be aware there are some things that do come up and we got to be we got to be on top of our game here. So here's listen to these kicks here. Um, I'm just going to apply a quick um, high cut. Yeah, I dig it. Um, for for some of the, 
I don't know, maybe the, the odd hits. I'm just going to put some reverb in there. And we're just doing that for, uh, you know, just dynamics, make it a little bit more dramatic. So I'm just going to go with chroma. Um, I mostly just choose the same stuff. And then at the end is when I'll, uh, you know, change it up a little bit. So um, I'm going to automate this information. I've got this set up to the circuit. If you guys know the circuit by Novation, it's really nice. You can map out controllers, you know, have a nice quick workflow. Uh, it's all about that workflow. So I'm going to hit record, um, turn on the latch automation, and then I'm just going to put in a little bit of reverb. I think I'm going to do it on the one and the three, if not for sure, on every one. Let's try it. Ah, got me. Here we go. All right, great. Uh, Eddie, why would you not do that manually? Well, I got to be honest. Sometimes it's just nice. It's nice to perform it in. You know, it's nice to not have to worry about that. Um, so here, let me just check. I got a text message. If you guys have any questions, uh, hit me up and uh, I will gladly answer you. I usually don't check my phone, but I'm going to be getting out of here in a little bit. And I just kind of need to be vigilant. Otherwise, like completely stay zoned in to what you're doing. All right. Don't uh, don't get distracted. Make sure you're you're on top. So, all right, let's uh, let's see where we are here. So now we actually have the makings of a song. Will it make it? I don't know. You know, will it will it actually uh, grow up enough? It's kind of like a like a you know a child or, or whatever, an offspring. Will it grow up enough to be able to survive? You know, the uh, the the realities of you know of the of the of the world or whatever. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we have to kind of build it and, and just you know give it a chance. So I like what's going on. I'm going to take these. Uh, the meat and potatoes, kind of the big part of the song. Move, move it over a little bit. Um, let me see. Why don't we go somewhere over here? And then let's try and replicate this. Sometimes what I like to do is just check out the length of the regions. Like You can see that this might be dangerous. Um, I'm going to cross-check my work. But if there's a region that isn't necessarily a perfect bar beat division tick what's going to happen is when you replicate it it's going to be off it's going to be offset by a little bit and that could be super dangerous so a you can fix it right and make sure it's exactly where it needs to be and if that's not something you want to do you can also just utilize the marquee tool secondary tool uh, for me it's the way i like to have my one two punch hold command go all the way to the right and then hit command d you can see that this is a perfect selection. Uh, look at the help tag. It says length 8000. Uh, what does the 8 indicate? Bars. All right. So 8 bars and then all the way through. So then now I have a bit more of a progression going here. Let me see what else I can add or, or how else we can build this so that we can connect this to the main section of the song. Uh, we could use some transitions. I don't know. We got to figure out what the bridge is, right? I don't mind it. Uh, I'm not totally sold, in which case I'm going to select the regions, hit control M. So that's just an indicator to me, whether I'm working on multiple songs or I, you know, I pick this up, you know, two months from now, this gives me an indication that I was thinking about it. I wasn't sure, but it's a maybe. All right. Uh, just for my ears, for research purposes, I'm going to drag this in. Let's see. Uh, let's see where this sits. Again, this is one of those things where it says 
you know, the length is not perfect, but look at the position. Forget about the length. Just look at the position, right? It's set up to exactly bar 8111. So that makes me uh, know for certain that this is going to play out. Um, although it may not be perfectly aligned at the end of it, uh, you know, uh, it's okay because I could just do a crossfade or what have you. But what the important thing is to, uh, you know, experience this for yourself and, and understand what I'm talking about. You can line something up perfectly to the grid, but it's, it can probably be the wrong size. And of course, if you repeat that, then the song's going to be off eventually. It'll probably sound good for like 10, 20 seconds. And then after that, you're going to have to, like I said, get back and, and clean it up. So yeah, man, it takes work. You know, this is something that, that's not just going to come. You have to kind of prepare yourself um, and, you know, double down on your strengths. If you're a, a fat beat maker, if, if uh, maybe you write melodies really well, that's great. That's fantastic. But, you know, what about uh, writing strings or, or mixing or what have you? You're going to have to, you know, be on top of things. So double down on your strengths, work on your weaknesses. And if you need help with that, you can go to hfmusicacademy.com. We serve a lot of people. A lot of people are doing very well, making some cash, uh, and building their careers. So here, let's keep going a little bit more here. Um, let me see what this synthesizer sounds like. I'm not not even sure if I'll like it. I just need to check, right? It's okay. Um, I'm kind of curious what it would sound like with the filter on. Just just for my own personal. All right. So actually, I like that. Um, I'm going to dedicate two tracks now. One of them is called Synth High Reverb with Filter. All right. And then one of them has no filter. So uh, let me go ahead and bypass that one. So now we have this. Again, still an unnatural transition, but now we're a little bit closer. Uh, in fact, now this snare might actually work uh, quite well. And so trial and error, right? We try things out. We keep going. Let's see what this sounds like. So that sounded pretty good. That's something that I can probably continue on with, or we can keep working the arrangement and we can keep trying to find if there's another angle. For example, maybe we take these, um, but rather than, hold on, let me do it this way. Rather than continuing on with this kick pattern, what we do is we switch to the other one right we recorded the four on the floor i don't know let's try it so option b for the hybrid workflow inside of logic which is unprecedented you know this is something that ableton can't do no offense to all my ableton peeps out there uh trust me i started off as a student i literally started off uh this whole you know game of, of music production about seven years ago um, and i started off as uh as a student of ableton I was trying to figure out what am I going to do? Am I going to stick to Ableton or am I going to stick to Logic, right? And so, yeah, I kind of eventually figured out that Logic was was better for me, but it doesn't mean that it's better for everybody. Um, okay, this looks good to me. Uh, I got to probably work on that. Let's move this over. All right, cool. All right, let's see if this works. So from here.
I don't know. I'm not sold on it. I like this as a whole. I kind of see it going somewhere. Obviously, this song is in its infant stages. Uh, I'm going to keep posting when I write music. We got the 45 song day challenge at hfmusicacademy.com. And I just want to show people how you do it. It's the whole thing. You know, we're providing a service, making sure people feel uh, like they're taken care of, like they're loved, they're respected. Uh, we have a ton of courses on our site. We offer logic 101 training, mixing and mastering training. And then now we're just, you know, giving people free resources to see. How, what does it look like on, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis when, if you want to write music? What does it look like? What do I got to do? And so this is what it looks like. You got to just clock in, clock out, brick by brick, build something, right? And so now let me just listen one more time from here to here, and then you know, we'll just keep clocking in. So here we go. Yeah, I mean, I could totally see a world where it works. I could totally see something here. Worst case scenario, you know, in Logic, we just, you know, create a cycle region, hit Control Command X, and we can get back to our originally scheduled program. But we're gonna we're gonna try it out. So I'm gonna write some notes for myself because I'm I got a dip here. So this is for the next session. So I'll see you guys, uh, you know, in a couple of days or something, maybe tomorrow. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tell ourselves. Uh, you know, add some bass. Um, what else comes to mind when I listen to it? You know, ask your intuition, ask your your higher self. What else can I do here? Um, I was thinking also I can add a uh, longer <clears throat> decay or piano. Um, and that also could be a longer delay. So we will see. I put a little question mark to remind me. Let me hear it again. Uh, you know, I play guitar. It may not be a bad thing to put some, some like long whole notes, just some stuff in the back. Let's try that out. Just, just real quick, I just got to do a couple more things. My brain's going. So let's see. If I bring this over here and I chop this in half, let's do eight. I think what I'm going to do is start this off with a filter. But let's stop with the low, with the uh, high cut. Let's, let's work one of these real quick. All right, that sounds really good. Um, I'm going to automate the volume again. So we want these performances to be dynamic. Uh, it's probably a plugin that could do this as well. I'm just going to rock with um, uh, AQA. So this is a feature in Logic, okay? It's called Automation Quick Access. Fantastic. You can find it inside of your automation settings. And so what you want to do is you want to tell Logic, can you learn where... I want to assign this. Okay, so I've got a button right here. I'm going to assign it, uh, and I'm just going to hit Learn Message, and then I'm going to turn the knob. It looks like I have, yep, you can look at the channel strip there. I've got control. So then now I'm going to turn it off, right? There, there's, there's no need to, uh, to, to have it. I'm sorry, I'm going to hit Done so that the feature is off, but we're going to leave Automation Quick Access on as a whole. This is something also that you can control inside of the toolbar. I don't have it set up that way. But if you want to customize the toolbar, you just control the toolbar itself. You go to Automation Quick Access. You literally just click it on, uh, enable it, make sure it's on, or you could turn it off. I'm going to leave mine on. All right. So then from here, 
uh, the best part is that whatever is selected inside of the automation menu, you can control using, you know, a fader that you have on, uh, you know, a keyboard controller or a knob for complete control. You know, you've got the rotary knobs, however you want to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and turn on automation, control option, command L for me. That's how I set it up. That's the key command that I set up. Everything you do has got to be automated. That's how this whole thing works. You know, you got to be able to just flow with it. Uh, you don't want to be, you know, stuck to anything. You got to keep moving. So that being the case, we're controlling track number one. Make sure it's in key focus. I'm going to press play and I'm just going to automate that up and down. So I'm not saying to automate all of your song. I'm not saying to do that for, you know, the entire, you know, duration of the track. That's probably not a good idea. Um, it's good to have some things that are stagnant, that are fixed, but you definitely need automation, uh, you know, as a whole. It's, it's something that you need to implement. If you want to be a dope producer, if you want to be somebody that has a recognizable name, somebody that gets tracks accepted, this is something that you have to start to adopt as a producer, especially if you're looking for a sustainable career. It's one thing to get lucky. It's one thing to, you know, land something once, maybe crack a deal, get a hit, but it's quite another to be able to do it time in and time out. And so that's what I'm suggesting to you today. All right. So then now last thing here, synth with filter, and this sounds a lot better. Uh, if this is your first time watching this, do me a favor, go back to the last video, listen to how we started and you can start hearing the makings of a track. I got to get out of here. My ride's here to pick me up. Uh, bless you guys. Stay on it. Stay focused. If you need more information, if you want to hear more about what we're up to, check us out at hfmusicacademy.com. Uh, if you want my latest course, I just sold it on Beat Academy's website, Beat Academy. If you want to check them out, go ahead. They've got great tutorials on Ableton songwriting as well. And so if you want my new course, how to license your music, check them out. Thank you very much for your time. Have yourself a nice weekend. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Stay up.